folks. Let's talk a little bit about clones versus ripoffs. You probably have heard those terms thrown around before by gamers like myself, but one thing that other gamers tend to not elaborate on is that there is a difference. For instance, a clone game is usually a good game. There's usually a standard of quality when it comes to clones. Take the Saints Row series, for example. The Saints Row games borrow quite a bit of features from the GTA franchise, but Saints Row is still a great light-up of games. They even reinvent the wheel sometimes. Another good example would be the game Freedom Planet and how it's a Sonic clone. But then you have ripoffs, and when it comes to ripoff games, they almost always suck. A good example of that is the game Super Noah's Ark 3D. This game straight up steals from Wolfenstein 3D, and it's really unrepentant about it. Plus it takes the features from Wolf 3D and makes them all sucky. So that's the difference between clones and ripoffs. One is usually good, whilst the other is usually terrible. But why am I talking about clones and ripoffs? Well, it's because the game that I'm reviewing in this episode is a Prince of Persia ripoff and a really bad one. Lester the Unlikely. You're telling me, pup. I haven't even put the game into the Super NES yet, and the problems already start. Let that sink in. The title of this game doesn't even sound like the name for a video game. It sounds more like the title for a child's storybook. This is something that the devs should fix. I can see this as like a working title, maybe, but not the main name. It would have been better had they'd have used a title like The Adventures of Lester, or maybe even Lester's Safari. Sure, those names sound a bit generic, but they also sound more video game oriented. A hell of a lot more than Lester the Unlikely. I'll be honest though, the title of this game is more or less of a nitpick on my end. That's very true, Shasta. And this game has a pretty bad title. Anyway, I did some research on this game and I didn't find an awful lot. But what I did find may shed some light on why this game is so bad. The game itself was developed by Visual Concepts. You know, the guys that make all those 2K sports games? Yeah, they made Lester the Unlikely. They also made the first two Clay Fighter games and Claymates. All three of those titles were good. So what the hell went wrong with Lester? Well, as it turns out, Bill Stanton, one of the lead artists for the game, was stretching himself pretty thin the year that Lester the Unlikely was released. He was not only working on Lester, but he was also helping with the development of Clay Fighter and a PC real-time strategy game called Dominus. In other words, he was working himself to the bone, and he probably had to cut corners on Lester because he had to focus more of his energy towards games that would be more profitable in the long run. Another thing that I came across while searching for info on this game was this lovely little statement given by one of the game's lead programmers, Brian Greenstone. He stated on his own website, quote, Lester was a game that no one liked. I don't want to talk about it. Unquote. Oh, that's just great. I'm reviewing a game that no one on the dev team even wanted to work on. You know, that kind of saddens me. Most games, not all, but most, are developed out of love. Love for trying to entertain folks and trying to bring something fun to them. Something tells me that this game was made purely to meet a quota for the publishers. Well, I think it's time to show y'all why I think this game is so fucked. Not really looking forward to playing this. Oh yes, this game is going to suck. But at least I can say with certainty that it's not going to suck anywhere near as bad as Fugitive Hunter.
When the game starts, we're given a title screen that shows our main hero Lester swinging on a vine. We also get a cutscene that explains some of the plot. And here's where the problems really start showing themselves. The story to this game is quite stupid. I'm gonna give y'all a little rundown, so spoiler warning. Lesser is a stereotypical geeky comic book nerd who wants to be cool. Uh, he falls asleep, that's right, falls asleep on a dock, becomes a reluctant stowaway on a cargo boat, the boat gets attacked and then sunk by pirates, Lester then ends up on an uncharted island, falls in love with one of the island's residents, saves the girl that he's in love with from a gorilla, because <laughs> that's never been done before, um, saves the girl's father from the same pirates that sunk the cargo boat, and then he surfs home. The end. This is a dumbass plot if there ever was one. This whole game's story plays out like a badly written episode for Spongebob. Seriously, it's written like a bad and cliched cartoon. I have a feeling that the plot was written like this because it was an afterthought. After all, no one really wanted to work on this title, so why would they be bothered to make a good story? But this is just the tip of the iceberg, folks. Wait until you see how the fucking game plays. I notice after beginning the game, one of the things that I have to do is get used to the control scheme. I'm not going to complain about how the buttons are laid out or anything, they're pretty normal for the most part. Well, all for the exception of the item pickup button, which is the X button for some weird goddamn reason. You can get used to the button placements, but I did some test runs before journeying further into the game. The real problem with the controls lies in the game's response to button inputs. It's kind of slow and clunky. There's like this lag between what's done on the controller and what's done in the game. And that's not good because in later levels you have to be fast or you end up dead. It's fucking frustrating. Lester moves around like a fat elderly person with fibromyalgia. Compare that to how Conrad Hart moves in the game Flashback. His movements are as smooth as silk. Plus, that game actually responds better to button inputs. You know, all they would have had to do to fix this problem would have been to tweak the game a bit so that it would read the controls better. I know that the devs didn't want to work on this game, but they surely could have taken the time to make it more responsive. <laughs> My biggest gripe that I have with this game has to be the main fucking character that you play as. Lester is probably one of the lamest heroes ever put into a video game. Have you ever heard the saying that first impressions mean everything? Well, it's kinda true. Like I mentioned before, Lester is a stereotypical geek, and when I say stereotypical, I mean that he fits all the characteristics of a geek stereotype. One of those characteristics is that he's afraid of virtually everything. Look at here. No. no? What do you mean, no? Get the fuck down there, you friggin' coward! Why are you running away? It's just a crab! Oh god, really? Totem poles scare you? Jesus, this guy is a pansy! Another stereotypical geek trait that Lester has is that he's a 98-pound weakling who gets hurt and or sidetracked by the slightest touch of anything. A good example is what can happen here with the seagulls. If one of these seagulls touches Lester, then he's flown back at least halfway to the beginning of the level. The only thing that you have to defend yourself in the beginning is this pathetic little kick right here. It ain't worth shit. Also, look at Lester's movement animations. I get it, he's a stereotypical geeky dorka dumbass, but why do his movements have to be so annoyingly exaggerated? AVGN pretty much said it best in his review for Lester. Who wants to play as a weak, pathetic character like this? No one. That's who. There's a reason why characters like Lester don't show up as a main hero in a video game. People like to play as characters that can do extraordinary things. We play as characters like that because it's something that we can't do in real life. Sure, it's escapism, but escapism done in moderation is not a bad thing. 
And it's not like Lester is a deep or mysterious character either. He's a fucking woeful stereotype, and an unfunny one at that. I should mention that Lester does become a bit more heroic towards the middle end of the game, but by the time you reach that point, you don't give a shit. Lester's already proven that he's a wimp. Though... He's not the last crappy aspect of this game. He's the worst, but he's not the last. Besides giving you a fucked character to play as, the game just loves to troll you. There are certain features in this game that I think were put in just to piss you off. And I'm not talking about the fall damage that Lester can take, after all, this game plays like Prince of Persia. What I am talking about is shit like this. You see that? There was no indication that told me that the last of these totem poles was going to shoot darts. What the hell? And I die again. The fuck am I supposed to do? Okay, after consulting the internet, I found out that you have to kick the first of these totem poles in order to get past this part. Alrighty, looks like I'm going to pass this level now and- WHAT?! Why did that totem shoot darts at me?! Maybe I need to jump over this one. Damn it, I did it too soon. Okay, I'm gonna make it this time. I'm gonna- No! After consulting the internet yet again, I found out that you have to place a jewel on this altar before you move past the totem. There was nothing in the game that indicated that I needed to do that. Also, the jewel is hidden, so you need to search around for it. I don't have an issue with that, but what I do have an issue with is the game not giving me, at the very least, some kind of warning that tells me that I can't pass this part without first fulfilling a certain task. But what if I told y'all folks that this isn't even the height of this game's trolling? Oh yeah. There's more. Like this level here where the ground gives way and Lester can get stuck on it and die. Or these fucking ghost hands that can pull you straight into the fire. Oh, and then we have this lovely stage. Here you have to ride this raft across a river. But let me tell you, this is anything but smooth sailing. You have to avoid these piranhas that jump out of the water to attack you, whilst also fending off these snakes that decide to fall out of the trees above. This fucking level is balls, and I've died more times here than I have anywhere else in the game. After getting through the wrath level, we come to this stage where we gotta get Lester to swing on these vines to get to a treehouse. However, the game sometimes doesn't register you grabbing a vine. Oh. Come the fuck on. Grabbing and then holding on to a vine should not be this difficult. In Donkey Kong Country, you can do it seamlessly. And that's on the same console. Hell, the original Pitfall got vine grabbing right. And that was years before Lester was even developed. And there's shit like this all over the place. It's throughout the entire game. It's like the devs were angry at the fact that they had to make this game, so they took it out on the players. Since the game rips off Prince of Persia, it of course has little puzzles to solve here and there. A lot of these puzzles, though, seem pretty ill-conceived, like they were just tacked on and no real thought went into them. Take this part here, for example, where the ghost tells me to toss two of these three skulls into the fire, and if I pick the wrong one, it's insta-death. Then there's this one, where I have to save this guy by putting out a fuse that's set to blow this box of TNT. I have to douse the fuse with pure water, because if I don't use pure water, it explodes. Of course. There's also this puzzle in this level here where I have to step on pressure plates in order to open a bunch of doors so that I can further advance. It's long and tedious. Again, because the devs didn't want to waste any of their precious time making this game right, these half-assed puzzles were thrown in. You know, this is one of the reasons why games are sometimes cancelled. I know I kind of sound like a broken record at this point, but I can't emphasize it enough that the team behind Lester the Unlikely just weren't into this project. If they were, then maybe the game would have been fun. But it's not. It's a chore. An annoying, hair-pulling, friggin' chore.
And I'm actually pretty fed up playing now. Oh, right. The music in Lester is pretty bad, too. Well, maybe not bad bad, but definitely not good. Take a listen for yourselves. The only way I can describe it is that it's so blasé, like it doesn't even care that it's in a game. Look, I'm not a person that always needs music in a game to be something epic like in Rock and Roll Racing or Halo, but it at least needs to be something that sounds good. Beavis and Butthead on the Genesis is not what I would call a good game, but the music is terrific. Another example are the tracks featured in Mario Sunshine. I absolutely hate that game, but the tunes in it were spot on. Like I said though, the music isn't bad, it's just so... there. And that's all I really have to say about it. Well, I've had enough playing this game, so I'm gonna give you all my final thoughts and give Lester its duly grade. This was not a fun experience. The plot was stupid, the puzzles were badly made, the control was slow, the music was bland, the gameplay trolled me, and worst of all, the main character was a complete fucking joke. Though, there were two things that I found that weren't so bad, like the graphics. Visually, this game is quite presentable. It's polished and pretty to look at. It's almost cinematic, too. And whilst I consider that a plus, it's all wasted on a bad game. Another thing that I found is that the concept for this title was good too. I like the idea of a character starting off not so strong, but then becoming stronger through experience. Had the devs have been more invested in this game's development, I think that they could have made this concept work wonders. But they weren't invested, so the game didn't execute that concept right at all. In fact, it was way off. Lester the Unlikely may not be loaded with bugs and glitches, but it's not bad in that way. It's bad on like a soul level. The game just feels very devoid of any kind of spirit. When developers don't care about what they're making, then we get games like Lester. And as far as my opinions go, if you're just not feeling it when making something, then either don't do it, or do it at a different time when you are feeling it. Maybe Lester could have been something great, but I'll never know. And what I'm left with is a grim reminder of what can happen to a video game when no one cares about its creation. So with that, I give Lester the Unlikely a T for Terrible. It's a game that no one on the dev team wanted to work on, and it shows. But I'm not the only one here to have a negative opinion about this game. Shasta, I think, wants to give his opinion too. sums it up pretty damn good, Mutt. Well, folks, it's time to end this review now, but Christmas time is upon us, and that means it's yippee ki time. Yippee-ki-yay time.